So the past month and a half in the Gulf region has been quite tumultuous with a number of uh, attacks against tankers and other facilities uh, that have been blamed uh, on, on Iran. Uh, Iran has rejected the blame. Um, what this illustrates is the brinksmanship and the very tense relations between several key global and regional actors. The US, since leaving the nuclear deal last year, uh, has ramped up pressure against Iran, adopting a strategy of maximal pressure, uh, which is not yet delivering the results that the Trump administration is, is hoping for. Instead, Iran is increasingly showing its teeth, uh, flexing muscle, um, in large part because of it is squeezed domestically and economically. Uh, also, um, Iran feels that it has been betrayed. Um, it has applied the nuclear deal and feels that its international partners are not delivering on their commitments. At the same time, however, um, Iran itself has security incentives to escalate against, against the US. Um, it does so largely uh, with plausible deniability. Um, it hasn't yet uh, uh, really activated its network of partners across the Middle East. Uh, that may be in the cards. In the short term, the question is whether this escalation uh, and especially the events of, of last, uh, uh, last night uh, with uh, Iran shooting down a US drone in the Gulf uh, uh, region, in the, in the Gulf of Amman region, uh, followed by a U.S. decision uh, to b bomb, conduct limited strikes on Iran that was just then reversed by President Trump because he seems very reluctant to go in into that escalation. The question is whether this cycle will come to an end if it, uh, the U.S. is willing to de-escalate and if Iran proves wise and magnanimous, or whether you know this is just another you know incident. Uh, in a broader picture um, that, you know, leads to much greater escalation. There's still a big question mark.